Welcome to this video on ray diagrams for diverging lenses. In the previous video, because we were just learning the process of drawing these ray diagrams, it was a little bit longer, so I split this one off on its own. But what we're going to take a look at here is the diverging optic. This is light that would cause, when it is incident upon the lens, causes the light to diverge rather than converge. And we can see here that it's thinner in the middle than on the ends. And we're looking at a cross section of it. Now we're going to follow very similar um, rules to what we did before. And again, I'll use the same color coordination. So I had a green for my incident ray. And my first ray is going to start at this object, this point at the top of the object and go in parallel to the principal axis and hit the lens. Now remember that if it hits above or beyond this, it's OK because um, this is just a representation. So we know what kind of lens we're using. So the next thing it's going to do here is it has to diverge. So it's not going to go in through the focal point like it did before. It's actually going to diverge away from the focal point on the other side from this point. So what I'm going to do here is actually line up those points. Now, I'm technically this portion over here all the way up to there is just a reference so I know where to draw the line instead of having to measure the angles. And I'm going to leave it there with a dashed line because it's going to become important later on. The other one, the next one I'm going to do is I'm going to have this from the same point. It's going to go in. Now before it went in through this focal point and refracted parallel, but here it's going to go in towards this focal point over here on the back and then it will do uh, something else. So let's take a look here. Okay, so we're gonna line it up with this focal point and I'm gonna have it go in through there and I'm going back just a little bit further here than I need to, just to make the line straight. Okay, again, this portion right here is just a reference so that I can get to where I need to line up the incident ray. Now this one, I'm actually going to erase, and we'll see why that is in a second. But I'll leave this point here so you can see where it lined up with. Now it's going to refract parallel to the principal axis. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that line in over there. So great, now we have the line. So we have incident line parallel to the principal axis, refract away from the focal point. Now it goes in towards the other focal point and refracts parallel. And as we talked about in the intro videos for the different kinds of lenses and mirrors, these two rays will never intersect. And so what I will have to do again is look through the optic along any of these lines and actually trace back the refracted rays only. Now you see why I left this line here is because this line refractive ray trace back and this ray trace back will intersect at this point over here. So my object was originally placed at this position and my image is now going to form on the same side as the object and it's a virtual image meaning that I'm not going to be able to see this image reflected or, or projected, I should say, onto something else. I actually have to look through the optic in order to see this image because my eye is going to have to trace back the refracted rays from a point that it appeared to. Now, I don't have to draw a whole variation of different um, object locations. With a converging lens, we saw that depending on where you place the object, within the focal length, on the focal point, between f and 2f, or beyond both, it changed the kind of image that formed. Sometimes it was real, and remember, real images for a lens form on the opposite side of the lens. Virtual images on the same side, that's a flip for the mirrors. And real images are always inverted from what the object's orientation is. But here, no matter where I place the object, I'm always going to get this virtual image. Remember again, virtual images are always in the same orientation as the object on the same side, and they're always smaller. So it will vary the image size slightly, but it will always be smaller than the object size. So if you look through a diverging optic, you see that um, in a diverging optic, the object or the image always looks smaller than the object. So it's like looking at a, a um, 
minimized view of a room. Now, in the following videos, we're going to be taking a look at the mirrors as well and doing the ray diagrams for the mirrors. And it's very similar. We're just going to vary it, obviously, because the mirrors reflect the light rather than refract it.